Good morning, everyone. Family of God. How are everyone? Right. That's an exuberant, joyful crowd I'm seeing today. Um, just a few announcements. Welcome. If you have never been here, or if this is your first time, or coming back, coming back uh, and visiting, that's a thrill. Um, I just want to remind you that in your order of worship is all sorts of wonderful information. Um, of course, the past two weeks we've not had uh, internet or computer. Um, I don't know if that's been resolved. Sir? Yes, awesome. So we did get our new office computer back. However, it was a fatal crash and everything is gone. So we do have the old computer up and running, but just be very patient with Carol um, because ev everything's gone and it needs to be restored somehow if we can find it um, on a backup somewhere. So. Thank you, Pastor. Um, so hopefully we'll all be in prayer about that. Uh, <laughs> that's a mess. Poor Carol. I've, ooh, bless her heart. But um, also in your order of worship, you will see a blue slip. Please do take the time to fill this out. Um, it allows us to know all sorts of information if we want to contact, if you want us to contact you, or um, any uh, joys or concerns through prayer requests. We are a church and a congregation that prays, and I can tell you personally that over the past few months I have felt the power of prayer through this uh, congregation, and, and I'm deeply and forever grateful to all of you all. You've carried me through a really rough time. Good, but rough. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, uh, the basic announcements is that uh, there is a new group being started. Uh, it's sort of been going on, but I think they're really uh, gathering, formulating. Uh, it is dinner out the Saint Jude. All are invited to join up with a new group that has started meeting for dinner out on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month. <laughs> By the group each week, and we meet at 6:30 for a casual evening out together, and it's uh, allegedly a lot of fun. This Tuesday, <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep getting invited and I keep forgetting. I've got another commitment or something, so I, that's why I say allegedly. But I know some of the people that are going, and and, and it's got to be a tremendous. Um, this Tuesday, July 11th, they're meeting at the Texas Roadhouse, 230 Eastwood Road. Let Tim Corbett raise your hand, sir, please. Or Aaron, I guess they were here earlier. Aaron Scallon, no, by Monday, July 10th, if you will be attending so they can reserve Service. enough space at the restaurant. Today we have a potluck brunch following the 11 o'clock uh, service right after. You'll start to smell the food cooking at the end. Um, Wednesday, July 12th is a celebration of life and other good things. When I heard celebration of life, I went, what? Who went? And uh, it's not. <laughs> it's uh, from 5.30 to 8.30 and it is celebrating Nancy Freiberg's uh, life and other things. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> if you have, there's more than the Holy Spirit here. <laughs> um, the celebration of life and other good things. A light supper is going to be provided by a Jenna Limbo in concert. Jenna is an amazing singer who will also play the guitar, banjo, and keyboards. Call Nancy Freiberg. Lift, raise your hand, please. Or Rena Goldwasser for more info. Um, and I'm supposing that this is in our thing, in our order of worship. John Lansford, the Ballot of Stock Hop, please. Yes, the Stock Hop. The 19th of next month, this will be our third annual Stock Hop. Um, it'll be hamburgers and hot dogs and french fries and a milkshake bar. And a, um, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, $10. Uh, tickets uh, won't sell today. They'll leave them available up through, you know, at the door or whatever. And I'd love to see everybody there. And I'd like to invite anybody who would like to join us bowling tonight. We do that every Sunday at about 25 and 5.30 at um, uh, the Beach Bowl in Austin. So we'd love to have you here. Sit down. Thank you. And I can attest to the fact that is hilarious. It is. 
Um, everybody cuts up where I do. Um, any other announcements? Any other? Any other? We are here to worship, not just hear announcements. But please bow your heads and let's take a moment to center ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to descend upon us. And now if you'll join me in the call to worship, we gather together in the name of the one who bids us come. We gather together to hear the words of the one who is love. We gather together to sing praises of the one who teaches us peace. Come, let us worship our Lord, the living God. Now if you'll rise as you're able to join me in the singing of the opening hymn, number 720. Thank mm-hmm. you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity that we can come worship you in this house. We ask that the spirit of the living God fall afresh on all of us. And that as you come into our midst, Holy Spirit, let us rejoice and be thankful that we are your people and you are our God. Loving God, open our eyes that we may see open our ears that we may hear, open our hearts that we may receive the power of your word 
and the majesty of your love for us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Song of Songs. Listen, it is my beloved. Look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. See, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth, the season of singing has come. The cooing of, dove, of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is saying to the church. Come, Holy Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord God. Jesus said, To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For God came neither eating, John came neither eating or dr nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of the tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of hope. Praise to you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Will you pray with me, please? Holy and loving God, once more we take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for the breath of life you gave to each one of us again this day, allowing us to rise once more from our slumber, gather in this holy place, sing these beautiful songs to your glory, and seek your blessing upon us that we should know you a little more when we leave this place today. So speak into our hearts now, dear Lord, for we are listening. In Christ's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> One of the books that I'm currently reading is titled, and it's a long title, What is the Bible? How an ancient library of poems, letters, and stories can transform the way you think and feel about everything. The author is a very well-known author and speaker, and has been featured on Oprah Winfrey's Soul Sunday TV show, and in 2011 was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time magazine. And he used to be a pastor at one of our country's largest churches, the Mars Hill Bible Church in Michigan, where the congregation grew to over 11,000 people meeting in a converted mall that became their church while he was there. The man's name is Rob Bell, and for more than a decade he was the young darling of the evangelical movement in this country. Until, until he began to have ideas that ran contrary to the hierarchy of the evangelical movement, in particular ideas about the expansive nature of God's forgiveness and grace, and to just which people God should offer forgiveness and grace. And so because of these differing ideas, he was unceremoniously asked to leave the church and the movement in 2011. But since then has been very active in all the things I just mentioned, writing, speaking, touring. Now I have to tell you, I knew of Rob Bell very well because it was during his heyday of popularity in the evangelical movement that I was beginning my journey that eventually led to seminary and ordained ministry. I did not agree with a lot of things Rob Bell said during his time at Mars Hill Bible Church. But since then, during his self-described search for a more forgiving faith, I have become someone who likes to read and to listen to what Rob Bell has to say. So back to this book, What is the Bible? How an ancient library of poems, letters, and stories can transform the way you think and feel about everything. In this book, he does something we actually have done in this church over the years, and that is to look at and read and turn in a different direction and read again and talk about and debate and decide for ourselves just what this Bible is all about. And if you were one of the people who took the course, the book study we had last year called The Story, you will know that the Bible is a lot of things. But the one thing it is not is just one thing. It is a compilation of poems and letters and stories and parables and genealogies and mystical visions and prophetic declarations. And we can call all of it the words of God, but we need to remember that the authors of these words were people writing to other people in particular times. Inspired by God, influenced by the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. But when you read, for example, one of, like, say, the Psalms of David, like we did last week, if you remember, 
It's very clear that this was something David wrote to God, expressing his feelings, his sense of abandonment, but ultimately his unwavering faith in God. <clears throat> well, this morning we have another piece of Holy Scripture that many people have never read before, do not know that it's in the Bible, and when they do hear it, think to themselves, that can't possibly be in the Bible. And it is a small little book called the Song of Songs, meaning the best of the best, right? The Song of All Songs. And it's a poem, or a song, and it's a love song, a passionate love song between two people that is full of lush and, and sometimes a little erotic imagery that makes some people not just uncomfortable, but angry that such a thing would be included in the Bible and that we would dare read it aloud in church. <laughs> well, I don't have to tell, many, <laughs> tell you, we're not that kind of church. You know, and if we're going to read some things out of the Bible, we should be open to reading all of it. Amen. Even the parts that say this, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is more delightful than wine. Pleasing is the fragrance of your perfume. No wonder the young women love you so. Take me away with you. Let us hurry. Bring me into your chambers. Those are the opening lines of the Song of Songs. And I don't think there's any denying what's being talked about. And there are a lot of people and a lot of churches and a lot of preachers who simply will not read this, especially aloud in church. Because it's sensual. It's passionate. It's a love poem that excites in the beauty of another person. And you know, one of the founding principles of MCC, a principle that's still part of our vision and mission, is the reconnecting of the sensual and spiritual. And let me be clear, I'm, I'm not immediately talking about sex when I say the word sensual. I mean, the word sensual means something that appeals to our senses, right? Taste, touch, sight, smell, hearing. Why wouldn't we want those things within our spiritual lives and not boxed off somewhere as if they're dirty? Why wouldn't we want to read the Song of Songs as part of Holy Scripture and have it included in our spiritual formation? I'm often confused by people who still want to make some sort of distinction between body and spirit and have all things relating to the body being bad and all things related to the spirit being good. And never the two should meet. I'm confused because I don't really know where they get this from. Well, actually, I do know where they get it from. Unfortunately, they get it from parts of the Bible. There are some things, in especially Paul's letters in the Bible, that hint at this. Flesh, bad, spirit, good. But whenever I'm confused about something like this, especially something in the Bible, the first place I like to go are the stories about Jesus, not Paul. And the best story of all is that Jesus lived in the first place. We celebrate this every Christmas when we talk about the incarnation, incarnate, within flesh. God becoming one with human flesh and living within the body of Jesus of Nazareth. So if flesh and all things dealing with the body are bad, why on earth would God choose to come and live in one? Let me ask, actually, how many people here have read the Song of Songs? A few. I mean, it's a great story. <laughs> it makes for really good reading. And it is part of our Bible. The Bible's underneath each one of your seats, comes right after Ecclesiastes, right before Isaiah. It's easy to find. <clears throat> and it's only eight chapters long, and it's beautiful. Well, a little history about the Song of Songs. There, there was actually quite a bit of debate about whether it should be included in the list of holy scriptures. And it's a Hebrew scripture, meaning it's part of the Hebrew Bible, our Old Testament. And those debating its inclusion were first century rabbis as they sat down for the first time to actually list what should be included in Holy Scripture. And from what I've read, 
there were some who thought it was was just a bit too risque to be part of Holy Scripture. But the matter was finally settled when one of the greatest teachers of the first century, a man named Rabbi Akiba, said of the Song of Songs, the whole world is not worth the one day on which the Song of Songs was given to Israel. For while all scriptures are holy, the Song of Songs is the holy of holies. Well, with that, case closed. It was included. And for centuries, the Song of Songs was widely regarded as one of the most appealing and insightful books of the entire Bible. In the first century, the late 100s, early 200s, a a man named Origen was one of the great theologians of the early Christian church. A lot of the basis of our entire faith is based on his writings. Well, he wrote several homilies and a ten-volume commentary on this little eight-chapter book. And then later, during the Middle Ages, a great spiritual uh, Christian spiritualist, mystic Bernard of Clairvaux, wrote 86 sermons on the song. And he never even got past chapter 2. And later on, John of the Cross, who I mentioned last week, we know him, he's the one who wrote the book, The Dark Night of the Soul. Well, he lived in Spain in the 16th century, and he wrote a lot of of books, a lot of things, and a lot of what he wrote were poems. And a lot of those books were collections of his thoughts and poems, all based on the Song of Songs. So what is it about this little book in the Bible that has inspired such enthusiasm for centuries? It is clear that this song is indeed a love poem that revels in the delightful, mysterious passion that can bind two people together. But it has also been interpreted as a metaphor of the great love that binds together the Lord and Israel God and the church, and Christ and the soul. And so, like most things, it it doesn't have to be just one thing. It does not only need to be a poem about love between two people, or only a metaphor about God's love for us. It can be both. And I believe that it is. And I believe that it is because it's helpful to believe that. Just like in our daily lives, in our spiritual lives, if if passion is lacking, then life becomes dull and, and faith becomes dull. I think this is why maybe so many people are turned off by religion. Because it can seem so narrow and restrictive and unforgiving and and dull. And not relative to anything at all we actually live during our day-to-day lives. Well, to that I would say, get out your Bible and read the Song of Songs, even if you have to blush the whole way through it. For this piece of Scripture not only celebrates human love and all the things that come with it, but it points us towards the passionate love that God has for us exemplified in the incarnation of Jesus, the cross of Christ, and the sacred heart that pours out the Holy Spirit to come and inhabit our bodies. You know, when we open ourselves up to a a passionate spirituality, we need to be ready for the full effect of God's love in our lives and be ready to live a life of faith that is not cold and calculating, but rather like being asked to jump over a large chasm with our eyes closed and trusting that we'll make it to the other side because we are riding on the wings of the one whose love will never forsake us and will continue to surprise and excite us if we would just be open to it. That is what can happen when we read the Bible for what it is a collection of all sorts of things. All sorts of things meant to instill us with a real understanding of this passionate love that God has for us. Well, let me close by quickly looking at the gospel story this morning and read it again the way it probably actually happened. Because there's real emotion here in this story. 
when Jesus is confronting some people who who he thinks are being a little too wishy-washy in their own faith and a little too critical of others. Listen as he says, you know, to what can I compare you people? You're like a bunch of little children sitting around whining all the time that you're not getting what you want. When God sent John the Baptist, he didn't eat or drink extravagant things and you called him a demon. Well, I've come and I both eat and drink and you call me a glutton, a drunkard, and a friend of sinners who surrounds himself with the most deplorable people. But then he says, but listen to me, please, and I'll tell you all you need to hear. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and rest upon my shoulders, for I will be gentle with you and you will find rest for your soul. You know, please don't ever skip over things that seem weird or awkward or dull when reading Holy Scripture. You know, for if we had decided to, say, read two other things this morning, can you see how we would have missed out on these two very different stories but both telling us the same thing? That God loves us better than any human lover? And that God has been calling out to us from the very beginning, come to me and rest your soul within my bosom. Well, my friends, I cannot think of any better news to give you this morning than that. Amen. 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 Will you pray with me, please? God of life, we come to you this morning from many places. Some of our hearts overflow with joy and gratitude. Others are barely hanging on to hope. Meet us where we are and bind us to each other so that in this community of your love we might discover our wholeness and pray ceaselessly for the care of all your children. And Lord, we pray this morning for the children of the world for those facing hardships right from the womb to those experiencing hard times at home. Instill in them the love they are not receiving but should. And Lord, we ask your blessing to be upon us as well, on our work and our rest, in jobs that feed our souls and in jobs that do not, in long hours of caregiving and in the hours we do not know how to fill. Come to us and show us how we might serve you each and every day. God of all things, enlarge the circles of our concern. Teach us to care for all of our sisters and brothers, especially those whose challenges are daunting and who challenge us to be their friend. Teach us to care for all things on this earth and to know your world is ours. Holy God, we pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, let us let's take a minute of silence to allow this Holy Spirit of God to speak to our hearts.
Amen. Thank you. And please be seated, everyone. And please join me in saying together our prayer of confession and assurance of illumination. The Lord is gracious and merciful, good to all, and full of compassion. We are asked that all of our works show thanks, yet often our concerns are more for self than for God. Trusting in God, let us offer now the silent prayers of our hearts. And now let us proclaim together our need for God's mercy in our lives. Glorious God, you offer us your wisdom, yet we fail to listen to you and neglect to follow your guidance. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us on, that we may walk in your ways and be happy in your presence. Well, my friends, the good news this morning is that God is always close at hand, ready to listen when we call out. God hears our prayers and answers them. So be at peace. God has heard your prayers. Amen. 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 And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. praise. So let us join with that heavenly choir of angels in that unending hymn of praise, saying... Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Well, blessed is the one who came down to earth so that we all may know the wonder of God's love. So with thanks and praise, let us proclaim again what is the mysterious and miraculous truth of our faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is here, and Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. And now let us all pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In memory of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer to you, O God, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. We ask that you turn these simple elements of your creation into our spiritual nourishment once more so that we may be filled with even just a sense of your grace and mercy, that we may then share with a hungry and hurting world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, He shared a meal, and during it he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body broken for you, and as you do this, remember me, and I shall never, ever leave you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Later on in the meal, he took the cup, giving thanks to God, he lifted it up saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of the new covenant, and as you do this, remember me, and I shall ever, ever be with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
My friends, each and every week we remind ourselves that here at St. Jude's, as in every single metropolitan community church around the entire world, we celebrate an open communion table. For we know there are no words we can say, no barriers we can erect to prevent anyone from coming to this table to receive these gifts, now blessed by God for all of God's people. We simply and humbly ask that you do come, and come just as you are. Come just as you are Hear the Spirit call Come just as you are Come and see Come receive, come and live forevermore. My friends, please do come receive these gifts of God for all of God's people.
and Almighty God, once more we say thank you for bringing us into your presence this morning and blessing us anew this day, to which we all can say thank you and amen. 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 And now if you would help me sing our closing song, it is number 705 in your hymnals.
and my friends, as you leave this holy place, may it be well with your soul, and may you share some love with someone you meet this week. Amen. 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 Amen.